All right, everyone, welcome back to another video. And in this video here this evening, we're gonna get ready to go ahead and go through the camera walkthrough and the photo and the video samples for the Moto G Power, the 2020 model. Now this particular walkthrough is gonna be a little bit different than the others because we've already covered the main camera interface in depth in previous videos for previous iterations of this device. And pretty much Motorola hasn't changed pretty much anything. All they've done is added some higher resolutions for the camera to record in, so on and so forth. The main interface itself and all of the features and functions pretty much have stayed the same. So for this particular portion of the video, we're just going to go ahead and do some verifications. Then I'm going to jump into the photo samples. Then we're going to finish everything up with the video samples. And as always with the camera samples and the walkthroughs, this whole video will be timestamped for your convenience. So please feel free to jump around to different parts of the video that you would like to know more about. All the timestamps will be available down below in the video description. Okay. And also, I'll throw a link to a previous camera walkthrough that I've done that will walk you, walk you through everything that you need to know. So if you want to know how you activate the cameras, you want to know the different features and way to launch into the cameras, check out that previous camera walkthrough on an older device, which is pretty much the same as this one if you would like to know more. But without further ado, let's jump into the verifications so we can get this video done quick, fast, and in a hurry. Let's go. So launching into the main camera interface here, you can see the main main camera interface, if you've owned a Moto device before, is pretty much the same. So we have our photo mode, and then we have our video mode, and the shutter changes depending on the mode that you're in. And then on the far left here, we have our additional modes. So all the regular Moto features and modes are here with the addition of the macro camera, which is that two megapixel macro camera. Now in particular, with the cameras on the Moto G Power, the 2020 model, we have a 16 megapixel primary camera that can record all the way up to 4K, 30 FPS, and do um, 120, 120 frames per second slow motion, or 240 frames per second slow motion in 720p. We also have a secondary ultra wide 8 megapixel camera and then we have a third 2 megapixel macro sensor. Now in particular when we talk about the macro sensor we do have the ability to take macro photos and macro videos but the only way that you can access the macro sensor is by coming into the uh, additional settings for the camera and tapping on the macro photos if you want to take advantage of the 2 megapixel macro sensor or by coming back in and tapping on the macro video if you want to take advantage of the 2 megapixel macro sensor. Now, if you shoot macro video, you're maxed out at a recording resolution of 720p as you can see right here. Now that's 720p in 16 by 9 or that's 720p in 19 by 9 which is the aspect ratio for the Moto G Power 2020 model. All right? And you can see that it is indeed a 2 megapixel macro sensor as we can verify right here. And to take advantage of full 2 megapixels, you need to, you need to shoot in 4x3 aspect ratio. Okay? Just so y'all can see that there. And everything is very neatly and nicely laid out here with some very nice descriptions below it. Okay? Just want to do, do that here so y'all know the verification. So that's how you would access the macro camera for taking photos, okay, or the macro camera for taking videos. All right, good. Then if we jump over to the photo section here, we can indeed verify that we have an eight megapixel uh, ultra wide camera. So if we tap here on the shortcut, that will switch us to the ultra wide camera. And now we can do some verifications. So if we jump into the settings here now, on the ultra wide, you can see, oh my bad, we have to be in video to do that. So if we jump into the video here, you can see with the ultra wide camera for the video, let me zoom all the way out here. 
and jump into the settings, you can see the ultra wide camera is indeed an 8 megapixel camera. And then again, that resolution changes depending on the aspect ratio that you record video in. Okay. And the same thing goes for photos. So you can see it's 8 megapixels. And the ultra wide camera maxes out at a recording resolution of 1080p, 30 FPS. So you could do 720p, 30 FPS, 1080p, 30 FPS, and 16 by 9 or 19 by 9. Okay? So good stuff there as well. Just so we can verify the 8 megapixel ultra wide. Right now, let's jump back down to the regular camera, and then finally, we have the 16 megapixel primary camera here. And you can see if we jump into the settings, we can indeed verify that it is indeed 16 megapixels. Now, all the photos you guys and gals are going to see were recorded or taken with the camera set to 16 megapixel mode. Now, the 16 megapixel camera does have quad pixel technology. So it did come out of the box set to 8 megapixel mode, but I wanted all the photos and videos to be in the full resolution. So I set everything to 16 megapixel mode. Now, that is in 4x3 aspect ratio. If we switch down to 16 by 9 you can see the resolution drops to 11.9 megapixels or 6 megapixels respectively. And if we switch to 19 by 9 you can see the resolution drops even further to 10.1 megapixels or 5 megapixels respectively. So if you want to take full advantage of all 16 megapixels, you need to shoot in that 4x3 aspect ratio. Okay, And they do give you a nice, uh, <clears throat> a nice description below as well. So y'all can see that. Okay, So good stuff there. And we can indeed verify that the 16 megapixel primary rear facing camera can record video up to 4K 30 FPS in 16 by 9 or 19 by 9. It can also do 1080p 60 and it could do 1080p 30 and 720p as well. All right. So just wanted to verify that real quickly for everyone. And then we can also verify that in terms of slow motion video, we could do full HD, 120 frames per second, or 720p, 240 frames per second, as you can see right there. Okay. Then, if we switch to the front-facing camera, the front-facing camera is also a 16 megapixel camera. Okay. And if we jump back in here, you can see the front-facing camera has the same resolutions or ratios as the rear facing camera, so 16 megapixels, and that's what I have it set to. Or you can use the quad pixel technology and it will output four megapixel photos, but it does change again depending on the aspect ratio that you set it to. So 16 by 9, 11.9 11 megapixels, or three megapixels, or 19 by 9, which is 10.1 megapixels, or 2.5 megapixels. Again, the selfies and the video was recorded at full 16 megapixel mode. All right, just so y'all know. Okay, and we do have the ability to do slow motion video with the front facing 16 megapixel camera as well. Same as the rear, so full HD 120 frames per second or 720p 240 frames per second. All right, and then along with that, we also do have portrait photos for the front facing camera along with the beauty effects so on and so forth okay and we also have a full pro mode for the front facing camera only while in photo mode we don't have pro mode while in video mode okay but when we are in video mode whether it be with the front or the rear facing cameras we do have focus control so you can see i could tap to get the focus Tap and hold to lock the focus. Right here. How to use my finger, it seems. Tap and hold to lock the focus. We do have exposure controls as well, so we can underexpose down to negative point uh, two stops, or we can overexpose up to plus two stops, as y'all can see right there. So you can really dial in the video or the photos in terms of the exposure wherever you want it to be. All right. 
So good stuff there. And then once you set it, it stays until you tap out of it again. All right. So just wanted to verify that as well. And again, if we go to the leftmost screen, you can see that we have portrait mode video. I mean, portrait mode photos for the front facing camera, slow motion for the front facing camera, and time lapse for the front facing camera. Everything else is the same as the rear. So we got spot color, cinema graph, and group selfie, along with our live filters. Okay, just wanted to show y'all that. And then if we jump back here and we jump back to the rear facing camera, it's all the same. So we got uh, pro mode for photo with the rear facing camera. Okay, and then you can see. Again, if we go to the leftmost screen, we got portrait mode, spot color, cutout, macro mode, cinema graph, panorama, and live filters. All right. So we do get more modes recording with the primary camera. All right. Just wanted to let everyone know that as well. And then also, I wanted to go ahead and point out that if you shoot in 720p, all the way up to 1080p 30, we do have access to electronic image stabilization. So you can see if I set the video down to 720p and then we jump out, you can see here we do have access to EIS, right? So you could turn it on or turn it off. And pretty much what that does is it crops the uh, sensor a little bit to cut down on the shake. That's what EIS essentially does. But if we go ahead and bump the resolution back up to, let me close this, bump the resolution back up to anything above 1080p 30fps, so 1080p 60 here, and then we jump back out, and you can see image stabilization or EIS is completely turned off. So I just wanted to point that out as well. All right, everyone, so this officially goes through all of the important information with the Moto G Power 2020 cameras. We did the verifications. We went over some specific modes. Now I'm going to go ahead and cut in the photo and the video samples. And I will see you guys at the end of the video. All right. So I hope everyone enjoys. And I'll catch you on the other side. Peace.
are back in and we're testing out the ultra wide and primary cameras on the Moto G Power. So starting off the testing here, we're starting off testing out the ultra wide 8 megapixel camera on the Moto G Power and this is being recorded in 1080p 30fps with no external microphone hooked up and this is the maximum resolution that the ultra wide camera can record in so 1080p 30fps is the max okay and let's jump straight into the usual testing let's not waste any time and the interesting thing is everything you can do with the primary you can do with the ultra wide but you can't seamlessly switch between them in one continuous video so I am gonna have to pause and switch down to use the primary or pause and switch up to use the ultra wide it can't be a seamless switch at least not yet for the motor devices alright so let's start off with the pans let's pan from here all the way through to right about there and let's come on back let's do this two times so that was one and here we go with number two and come on back to the center boom let me know what y'all think now let's test the exposure so let's line up on the tree over there and let's pan down to the ground and pan up wow you getting everything in the frame boom let's do this two times so that was one pan down pan back up and that was two what do y'all think how was the transition from the lighter areas to the darker areas? Was there any exposure blowout? I didn't really see any. Let me do it one more time just to make sure. So up and down. Back up. I saw a little bit, but not much. It recovered very nicely. Let me know what y'all think. Again, keep in mind, when we're testing out the exposure, we want a nice smooth transition from the lighter areas to the darker areas with minimal exposure blowout. So what do you think? What do you think? All right, now let's get into testing out the focus. So here we go. We're going to pick our three focal points. I like those bushes over to my left. Okay, big tree in the center. Pillar over to my right. Okay. So starting off, we're going to test out the continuous autofocus, and then we're going to use tap to focus. Now we do have focus lock controls, as well as exposure controls with the ultra wide and the primary. Okay, so good stuff there. And we do have EIS on the ultra wide and on the primary, but that's only when recording up to 1080p, 30fps. When you record in 1080p, 60 no stabilization when you're recording 4K 30. No stabilization, okay? So you only get stabilization up to 1080p, 30 FPS. So let's go. Let's test out this autofocus now. So bushes. What do you think? Tree. What do you think? Pillar. What do you think? One more time. Bushes. Tree, pillar, what do you think? All right, let me change up my grip a little bit. And now let's test out the tap to focus on the same subjects, two times each. So bushes, tap, locked up, okay, that was pretty good. Tree, tap, locked up, that was also pretty good. Pillar, tap, locked up. And that one kind of overexposed the background, but it did report a focus lock, so that was number one. What do you think? Coming back over, bushes, tap, 
Locked up. Not bad. Not bad at all. Tree. Tap. Locked up. Pillar. Tap. Locked up. Good stuff. Good stuff indeed. All right. And I'm wondering, do we have any zoom controls with the ultra wide? Let's find out. So we're locked up on that tree over there. Let's see, can we zoom in? Ah, we can. That's it. So we get, ah, okay. So pretty much the same as the primary you can do with the ultra wide. So let's test it out real quick. Let's go. So no zoom. 25% right here, 50% right here, and then 100% let's zoom in on that tree, that's it, so 100% zoom with the ultra wide, and boy did that image degrade quickly, yeah, don't be, don't be zooming with your ultra wide, y'all, it's not pretty, just leave that zoom turned off. All right, so now let's switch down to the primary and let's redo the testing. I'll be right back. See y'all in a second. All right, everyone, primary, 16 megapixel camera, 1080p, rear facing camera test. Let's get it in. So let's start off with the pans. Let's go. So panning over here. All right, all the way through. To right about there, two times each. So that was one. Let's come on back. Here we go with number two. All right, what do you think? What do you think? Come back to the center. Let's go directly into testing out the exposure. So we're lined up on the tree. Let's pan down to the ground. Woo, look at the big difference in field of view compared to the ultra wide and the primary. With the ultra wide, you can see everything in the frame. With the primary, can't see that much. All right, going back up, let's do this three times. So up, down, one, up, down, two, up, down, three. How did that exposure look, y'all? Now, when we test out the exposure, we want a nice smooth transition from the darker areas to the lighter areas with minimal exposure blowout. And if the cameras do blow out, we want them to recover as fast as possible. So how did the Moto G Power cameras just do? Let me know. Let's go straight into testing out the continuous and tap to focus now. Continuous autofocus first. Got the three subjects lined up. So bushes to the left, tree to the middle, pillar to the right. All right, we're gonna do each two times. Let's see how we do. So bushes to the left, that actually looks really, really good. Tree to the middle, that also looks really good. And then pillar to my right, not bad, not bad at all. One. Bushes to the left, tree to the front, pillar to the right. Two. All right, let me switch grips. All right, tap to focus time. Here we go. And again, we do have focus lock and exposure controls as well, as well as the ability to take photos while in video. So let's get into this. Uh, bushes, tap. Locked up. Now, it's funny. The focusing speeds for the primary camera, I feel like they're a little bit slower then the focusing speeds for the ultra wide. Kind of funny, but it is what it is. Bushes, I mean, tree in front, my bad. Tap, locked up. Yeah, it takes a little bit of an extra second there. Then pillar, 
Tap. Locked up. Yeah. And then it over it's overexposing just like the ultra wide. So that was one. Let's go again. Bushes. Tap. Locked up. Yeah, it does take a little extra second. Tree in front. Tap. Locked up. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then pillar. Tap. Locked up. Now, what I'm looking for, y'all, is that when you tap on the subject, you get a white circle. And then when that white circle turns green, that means that the focus should be locked. So that's what I was looking for. When I tap, I see a white circle. And then when it turns green, that means focus was locked. So it did take a little bit of an extra second there. But it is what it is. All right. So now let's round this bad boy off. Let's test out the zoom. Then we're going to test out the front-facing camera. Then we're going to run inside and do some more testing. So here we go. No zoom on the primary lens. Let's zoom into that same tree as with the ultra-wide. So this actually looks pretty good. So let's zoom in 25%. 25% zoom right here. And you know what? Let me lock the focus just to make it easier. So lock that focus. Lock that exposure. There we go. So 25% zoom, how's the stabilization, how's the detail retention, let me know down below. All right, let's keep going. 50% zoom now. That's 50% zoom right there. Again, how's the detail, how's the stabilization, let me know. All right. All right. Let's max it out and focus on the top. So max zoom, 100% zoom on the primary lens. And let's lock that focus on the top. All right, focus locked on the top of the tree. What do y'all think? This looks very grainy and pixelated to me, so I actually wouldn't recommend it. But what do y'all think? All right, let's zoom out. Now, if you're going to zoom in with the Moto G Power cameras, this right here will serve you well. 25% right here. Okay? Cool. All right, let's zoom all the way out. All right, so real quick ultra-wide camera test. Real quick primary camera test. Now, let's quickly test out the front-facing 16-megapixel camera. Then we're going to run inside and do some more testing. So I will be right back. See y'all in a second. All right, so here we go, everyone. The front-facing 16-megapixel camera on the Moto G Power. Just a real quick front-facing vlog-style test here. How's the detail? How's the stabilization? How's the audio? Let me know down below. I got a, I got a package over there I got to go pick up. Picked it up after this video. All right, but what do you think? What do you think? It actually, it looks good. Makes my, my skin look a little orange, but it looks good. All right? Again, this is maximum resolution for the front-facing camera. 1080p, 30fps. Okay? Good stuff. All right. Now, real quickly, I want to give y'all a vlog-style test with the ultra-wide camera, and then we're going to run inside. So hold on one second. Let me switch cameras one more time. Come back with a real quick clip test for y'all. Then we'll run inside. I'll be right back. All right, y'all. So here now is a vlog style test with the ultra wide camera on the Moto G Power. And hopefully I got this framed up correctly. Okay. Because I can't see the viewfinder. So I, don't, I have no idea how the framing looks. But how's the detail? How's the stabilization? Let me know down below. Real quick test. How's the audio as well? All right. Let's run inside and we'll do some more testing now. I will be right back. Yeah, I'm not trying to waste any time with these clips. Let's get it in, get out, get going. You know what I'm saying? I'll be right back. So now we are inside here. And I just want to give y'all some indoor daytime low light tests. Now, starting off the indoor daytime low light test, we're testing out the ultra wide 8 megapixel camera on the Moto G Power at its maximum resolution of 1080p 30 FPS. 
with no external microphone hooked up. So please let me know what y'all think of this one here. How's the overall detail? How's the overall audio? How's the overall stabilization? Let me know down below. All right. Now, let me switch to the front facing 16 megapixel camera and give y'all a similar test. So I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. And here y'all can see now we're testing out the front facing 16 megapixel camera on the Moto G Power. And this is at the front facing camera's maximum resolution, 1080p, 30 FPS. And this is indoors, daytime, low light. So we just got a nice stationary vlog style test for everyone here. Let me know what y'all think, okay? Y'all can see how this differs or compares to the ultra wide if you go back and watch the previous clip and then come watch this one. What do you think? Now, giving y'all my feedback, this one seems a little bit darker than the ultra wide in pretty much the same position, same lighting. But I can go in and adjust it so I can lock the focus on my face, okay? Lock it there. And then we can go in and dial in the exposure properly. Boom. So now this is properly exposed and it is nicely in focus. So what do you think? So the ultra wide camera seem to be a little bit better than the uh, primary front facing camera. In my opinion, it's just my two cents. Let me know your thoughts down below. Now let's go ahead and test out the ultra wide uh, rear facing traditional review style and the primary rear facing 16 megapixel camera in the same lighting scenario. I will be right back with that test for y'all. See y'all in a second. All right, everyone, so now we're back in and we're testing out the ultra wide and primary cameras on the Moto G Power. Starting off, we're testing out the ultra wide eight megapixel camera at 1080p, 30 FPS, and it's a rear facing indoor daytime low light test. Okay, so let me just verify for y'all if we pan over, and I know I got a big stack of boxes over there, but if we pan over, y'all can see the only light source that we're using to light up the scene here today is the light coming in through the window here, and I do have it cracked, so y'all can see if I'm not focused on the window, it's actually kind of dark in here. So this is indeed indoor daytime low light. All right, let's angle this over. And let's position this up. Let's go. And let's see how the ultra wide cameras do. So that looks straight. Let's pan this down. That is not straight, my bad. I can usually tell if it's straight when I pan it down. So that is not straight. Let's straighten that out. All right. Okay, so now that is indeed straight. And y'all can see here how much we can get in view with the ultra wide cameras. But also notice the detail loss here, okay? Because this is a good distance and it should have everything nice and in focus and picking up a lot of detail. And you see how grainy the text is on my phone stand here. The colors are okay, but there's a noticeable amount of graininess with the ultra wide camera. But the key thing with the ultra wide cameras is the field of view. So I just wanted to give y'all a real quick snippet test with the ultra wide camera. Now I'm just gonna quickly cut in the primary camera and we're gonna go from there. So I'll be right back. All right, quick jump cut here. I didn't even move the camera at all, so it's the same position it was from the ultra wide, so y'all can see the difference in field of view. Also, look at the difference of how much detail you can pick up with the primary 16 megapixel camera compared to the ultra wide camera. Now, the colors are very similar, so the color science on these are actually looking pretty good. So, good job, Motorola, at least with the color science, but you definitely need to improve your ultra wide camera in terms of the detail, definitely need to improve that. But lining it up so it's everything is nice and lined up straight, this is what the primary camera looks like if you're doing a nice stationary shot here. 
And that actually looks really good. I wouldn't be mad at myself if I used this. Okay. But based on what I'm seeing from the viewfinder here, there's some noticeable green here on the keyboard. And the text on the keyboard isn't as sharp on either side. So, and it is overexposing this right here. This is not that light. So, the cameras definitely struggle in lower lighting situations, but it does an okay job. Alright? But, to get the best performance out of these cameras, you do want to make sure you have good to really good lighting. Okay? Let's do a real quick focusing test here. Let's see how it does. So, let's take the phone stand out. That was pretty good. Now it's still overexposing. And you can see the text on the keyboard still just isn't as sharp. Now it's legible, but it's not as sharp as it could be. Let's bring the phone stand back in. All right, not bad. Let's take it out again. Yeah, not bad. So focusing speeds are still pretty good, even in lower light. But there's a definite uh, and noticeable detail loss, but that's to be expected. All right, so real quick, uh, indoor daytime low light tests, front and rear facing style with the primary uh, 16 megapixel, the ultra wide 8 megapixel, and the secondary front facing 16 megapixel camera on the Moto G Power. Now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna wait till a little bit later on and we're going to redo similar tests, nighttime artificial lighting scenario. So I will be right back with those next set of tests for everyone. I'll see y'all in a little bit. All right. And here we go, everyone. Here we have the indoor nighttime artificial lighting test with the ultra wide front facing and primary cameras on the Moto G Power. Starting off here, this nighttime um, artificial lighting test, we're starting off with a vlog style test with the ultra wide 8 megapixel camera. And this is at 1080p, 30fps, with no external microphone hooked up. So, y'all let me know what you think of this one. How's the overall detail? How's the overall focus? How's the audio? How's the stabilization? Let me know down below. All right, let's go ahead and switch to the front facing 16 megapixel camera right now and we'll come back and we'll redo the same test. I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. And now we are back in and here we are testing out the front facing 16 megapixel camera on the Moto G Power, the 2020 model, right? This is being recorded in 1080p, 30fps, with no external microphone hooked up. And this is nighttime artificial lighting here. So real quick, stationary vlog style clip here. Let me know what y'all think. How do y'all feel this compares to the ultra wide sample that y'all saw first, okay? So go back, check out a few seconds of the ultra wide clip, come back to this clip, and then comment down below, let me know what you think. Now what I want to do is we're going to spin it around again, and we're going to get into testing the primary and the ultra wide cameras in a more traditional reviewer style approach. So I'll be right back with the next set of clips for y'all. I'll see y'all in All right, everyone. So here we go. Now we're testing out the ultra wide cameras in Nighttime artificial lighting here. This is the ultra wide 8 megapixel camera on the Moto G Power, and this is with no external audio hooked up. All right, and this is in 1080p 30 FPS. So let me do some quick verifications and let's get on with the testing here. So let's pan over to the window, and y'all can see this is indeed nighttime artificial lighting, and we got no light coming in through the window here. But if I pan up and over, y'all can see the only light we have lighting up the scene is my overhead artificial room lights right here. Okay, real quick verification. Now let's pan down, let's put it down, and let's line everything up. Let's go. All right, so that looks about straight. And now let's angle it down. 
think. Shaky Cam Productions here. Sorry, y'all. And let's bring it over a little bit. And bam, there we go. So that's straight on there. And again, y'all can see this is with the ultra-wide camera. So look how much more we can get in the field of view with the ultra-wide camera. But I do have to say this. It does look out of focus. Like, my phone stand here should be in focus. Like, if I tap to lock the focus, it says it's in focus, but it still looks out of focus to me looking through the viewfinder. And you can see once I lock the focus, how much darker the image got. But I can go ahead and adjust the exposure after the fact so I can fix the uh, light there via the exposure slider. But still, it does look a little bit out of focus, focusing on my phone stand here. So we're not even going to do any more testing with the ultra-wide cameras. Now I just want to quickly switch to the primary 16 megapixel cameras. And we'll do some more testing before we wrap this up. So I will be right back. Alright, so here we are now. Now we're using the primary 16 megapixel camera lens here. And I just wanted to show y'all something real quickly. So this is in the same position as the ultra wide was. And y'all notice the difference in the field of view. You see how much closer it is. You see how much sharper the text looks. But because it's so close, I do feel like I need to back it up a little bit. And then I feel like I need to angle it up a little bit as well. This is where we get a similar field of view to the ultra wide. So that looks a lot similar to the ultra wide. But I just wanted to keep it in that same setup so y'all could notice the difference in the field of view. But look at the detail here that we get with the primary compared to the ultra wide. The text on the phone stand is nice and sharp. The colors are a little bit better here in this nighttime artificial lighting scenario here. A lot better than the ultra wide was getting. All right. So now let's just do some quick focus testing and then we'll wrap this up. So right now, is focused on my phone stand. Let's tap up and make sure. Yep, it's focused on the phone stand. Now let's move the phone stand and see how quickly it takes to lock on the keyboard. Lock. That was actually pretty quick. And y'all can see the text on the keyboard does look pretty good still. Now it's not as sharp as it could be, but that's more than legible. Let's do another focusing test here. So let's bring the phone stand back in. Let's see how quick it locks back up on the phone stand here and lock. That was actually pretty quick. All right. And one more time, let's take the phone stand out and see how fast it locks up on the keyboard and lock. Again, pretty quick. So even in this lower light scenario, I would say the focusing speeds are okay. It, it's locking up fast enough. So I really can't complain. But y'all can notice what it does when it does the different locks. Like you can see when it locks up on the phone stand, the image gets a little darker. When it locks up on the keyboard, the image gets a little lighter. So on and so forth. But all in all, real quick, nighttime artificial lighting test with the ultra-wide and primary cameras on the Moto G Power. Now what I'm going to do is we're going to switch to testing out the primary 16 megapixel rear facing cameras exclusively because the ultra wide cameras are done. We tested those at their max resolution 1080p 30fps. The front facing camera is done. We tested that at its max resolution 1080p 30fps. So now we're going to test out the rear facing cameras at 1080p uh, 60fps and the rear facing cameras at 4k. 30 FPS. So I'll be right back with those clips for y'all and then we're going to bring this whole camera review to a close. So I'll be back in a little bit. See y'all. All right, everyone. And now we are back in and we're testing out the primary camera on the Moto G Power, the 2020 model. This video is being recorded in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up and we're out here by the pool today so let's see how these cameras perform shall we so let's start off with our usual testing here let's hit the pans let's go so we're going to pan from here all the way through to right about there 
and back. We're going to do this three times. So that was one. Here we go with number two. Okay. And here we go with number three. All right. Boom. All right, let's do the exposure testing now. So we're going to use the tree behind the pool area as a focal point, and we're going to pan down to the water. Actually, we can go all the way down to the pool deck here. And we're going to pan up and out back to the tree. And y'all let me know how it does with the exposure management. Now what we want is a nice smooth transition from one focal point to the other with no exposure blowout. But if the cameras do blow out, we want them to recover as evenly as, and as quickly as possible. So let's do this three times as well. Let's go. So here we go with number one. Going up and out. Boom. How was that? Coming back down. Boom. Now, it's a very subtle exposure shift, but it's not bad. Let's go again. Two more times. Up and out. Boom. Back down. Boom. Last time, up and out. Boom. Back down. Boom. What do you think? What do you think? All right. Now let's do the focus test. So once again, we're going to use this tree out in front of us here behind the pool deck here as one focal point. We're going to use this pool chair off to our left as another. And let's go ahead and use this mango tree off to our far right as the last one here. And let's see how it does. Now, the Moto G Power does have continuous autofocus as well as tap to focus. We're going to test both. We're going to start off with the autofocus first. So the camera is going to do all of the work. And y'all let me know how you think it does down below. All right, let's get started. So coming over to the left here, going to the pool chair to the left, or the folding chair to the left, that looks like it's locked up. What do you think? Coming to the tree in the middle, that also looks like it's locked up. What do you think? And then going over to the mango tree to the right, the scene did get a lot darker as we panned over to the mango tree, but it does look like everything is in focus. Let's do this one more time. Coming over to the far left, folding chair. Looks good. Now, it is overexposing the background while keeping the subject in focus. So you can see the sky in the actual scene does not look white like that. It's the actual baby blue. So it is overexposing, but our focus subject is in focus. Coming over to the tree in the center. Boom. It's in focus, but it is overexposing yet again, as you can see. Again, the sky in real life is not white. It's not even cloudy. It's actually blue, okay? So it is overexposing, but it does look like it did lock focus, and it does look pretty good. Coming over to the mango tree now. And y'all can see it's more of the same. It did darken up. Now, when we focus on the mango tree, it's keeping the mango tree in focus, and it's doing a little bit, a little bit better with the exposure for the sky, but it is still overexposing a little bit based on what I'm seeing here, but that doesn't look too bad, all right? Now, let me readjust my grip, my bad for the shaky cam production, and we're going to do the same test with the tap to focus, and I'm just going to report when it says it got a focus lock. So here we go. Folding chair, tap, locked up. Oh, and I saw a little funny business with the exposure adjustment. But not bad. Not bad at all. A little bit of hesitation, but it locked up fairly quickly. Tree in front, tap, locked up. Wow, that's super overexposed. It did lock up quickly, but it super overexposes it. Now, again, I can dial in the exposure to the proper color if I want. So we can underexpose it, and right about there looks right, but it's still overexposing in the corners, in the upper right-hand corners. But that looks a lot better than the uh, original image, 
And again, if I want to turn the exposure off, I just tap anywhere to turn it off. All right, let's keep going. Mango tree. Tap. Locked up. Not bad. Not bad at all. That one got super dark, but it did overexpose for the tree properly now. All right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-mm. All right, let's go. Oh, yeah, and it's definitely struggling to get that back exposure right. All right, so real quick, tap to focus test. What do y'all think? Now let's go ahead and do some zoom testing here, and then we're going to wrap the video up. So y'all can see there is a pole, or tree rather, all the way out there. That's what we're going to focus on and zoom into. So let me lock the focus. Lock it, and let's zoom in and see how it does with the detail retention and the stabilization. Now, when you record in 1080p60, all the stabilization is turned off, so we're not using EIS, and it doesn't have any OIS, so I do apologize if this video is more shaky than usual, but let's see how it does anyway. So let's go up to 25%. All right, 25%. What do you think? Okay. And the colors on here don't look bad. And the detail looks okay. Now let's go up to 50%. 50% right there. Now you can see there's a noticeable loss in detail. And the image did get super shaky. Alright. Let's take it up to 100 anyway and see how it does. 100% zoom. All right, so we've lost all detail. We've gotten super shaky here, and this is pretty much unusable. So I wouldn't recommend maximum zoom. I never recommend maximum zoom on any cameras. 25%, this, right here, this is it, 25%. Still kind of shaky, but the colors are good. The detail retention is good. This is usable. Now, if you want to get closer to your subject, you need to physically get closer. Anyways, let's zoom out. All right, and now we're back to no zoom. Okay, so now let's do a real quick vlog style video with the primary cameras, and then we're gonna go inside and do some more testing. So give me one second, let me set that up, and I'll be right back. I'll see y'all in a little bit. All right, everyone, so now we got a real quick vlog style video with the primary 16 megapixel camera on the Moto G Power. This is being recorded at 1080p, 60 FPS, with no external microphone hooked up. So let me know what y'all think. And honestly, I don't even know what the exposure looks like. I don't know what anything looks like because I can't see the viewfinder. So hopefully, this camera does a great job in auto mode. And then even still, I can probably lock the focus and lock the exposure beforehand. So I'll see what it looks like. Y'all let me know this is in auto mode, and now I'm going to quickly adjust it, and then we're going to do it again. So I'm going to be right back, and I'm not going to pause the video. We're going to do all the adjustments in real time, and y'all let me know if it's any better. Now, I won't be able to tell you until I watch the playback, but here we go. All right, so it's a little bit darker scene today, but let's go ahead and lock the focus on the center of the frame. And then let's go ahead and I'm gonna overexpose up to 0 0.83. So it's slightly overexposed and the focus is locked on the center of the frame. All right, let's see how it does now. All right, so here we are after some adjustments. So hopefully this looks a little bit better. Hopefully I didn't mess it up too much. But again, let me know what you think of the detail, the stabilization. The audio, let me know all that good stuff down below. Now we're going to run inside and we're going to do some more testing with the primary cameras. All right. I will be right back. I'll see y'all in a sec. All right, everyone. And now we're indoors and we're testing out the primary 16 megapixel camera on the Moto G Power in indoors daytime low light. And this is also being recorded in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. 
So let me know what y'all think of this real quick vlog style stationary footage. Now, all I've done here is lock the exposure to what I think is accurate for the scene because I did a few test takes and the auto exposure tends to run a little bit dark. So hopefully this one is properly exposed for the scene. Other than that, everything else is set to auto mode. So how's the stabilization? How's the focus? How's the detail retention? Let me know all that good stuff down below. Now let me spin the cameras around and I'm gonna give y'all a traditional reviewer style test clip with the primary 16 megapixel cameras yet again. All right, I will be right back. I will see everyone in a second. All right, everyone, and now we are back in, and now we're gonna test out the rear-facing primary camera on the Moto G Power indoors, daytime, low light, okay? And this is a more of a traditional reviewer-style setup here, so let's see how the cameras do. Now, first things first, I, would, I just wanna do a little bit of verification for everyone. So let's verify real quick and then we'll jump into the testing. So panning up and panning over. Y'all can see the only thing lighting up the scene here today is the light coming in through my window here. As you can see, if we pan over more, there's no other light lighting up the room, okay? So this is indeed indoor daytime low light, okay? Just wanted to verify that for everyone. So now let's pan back over, set everything back down angle it up back how it was, and let's get into some testing here. So that looks straight, let's pan it down. And that looks good, that looks real good. All right, good stuff, good stuff indeed. All right, so here is what a stationary video would look like if you're using your G Power. Now you can see the detail here looks okay. But it's definitely overexposing this bottom uh, right-hand corner of the screen. And it is overexposing this top right-hand corner of the screen as well. But other than that, the actual footage looks okay. All right? And as I said before, if I wanted to try and fix that somewhat, I can go in and dial in the exposure. So you can see, once I dial in the exposure properly, look at that. That looks good. That looks real good, and I think right there is perfect. Now, it's still a little bit overexposed right here, but this is a lot better than what the original footage was. All right, so really good stuff there, really good stuff indeed. Let me know what y'all think. Am I wrong? Are my eyes bad? Leave your feedback down below. Let me know. Now, let's do some quick uh, focus testing, and then we'll wrap the video up. So... Picking up the keyboard here, how does that look? How's the detail on the text? How legible is that? What do y'all think? What do y'all think? Now, it actually looks, that looks good. It's a little bit grainy to my eye, but that looks good. And I noticed that the focus is uh, peaking and popping a little bit. So it's kind of struggling to keep the focus. But what do y'all think? What do y'all think? How is that? How is that? All right, now let's grab a phone real quickly and we'll do some focus speed tests and then we'll wrap this bad boy up. Let's go. All right, so right now it's focused on the keyboard. Let's make sure. Yep, it's focused on the keyboard. Got our green circle. Then we're going to take our S7 active here. Clean this off a little bit. And this is going to be what we use to help us check out the focusing speeds in this low light scenario here. Cleaned off the phone a little bit. So let's bring the S7 active in. And look at that. Now it did lock focus up really, really quickly. And the detail on that looks really, really good. But the picture itself is extremely dark. Now, I think I can fix that. By messing with the exposure again. So if we bring the exposure back up to right about here, that actually looks really, really good. Alright? So what do y'all think? Check that out. That text is looking mad readable right there. Little bit of focus hunting going on. 
Let's check the speeds now. So let's take the phone out. Oh yeah, definitely struggled to lock back on that keyboard. Bring the phone back in. Lock back up on the phone. Struggling a little bit. Oh yeah, so we're definitely gonna have some struggles in lower light with this device. But once it dials in, you can actually get some pretty good footage. Especially if you're willing to tinker around with it a little bit and lock the exposure, play around with the focus. You can get some pretty good footage out of this. But out of the box in auto mode, it is going to struggle in these lower light scenarios. So let's do one more focus test. Take the phone out. Yeah, yeah. It did take a little extra second to get on the keyboard and still it looks a little bit out of focus. Bring the phone back in. Still, that's pretty good. And look at all that texture and detail that it's picking up from the back of the phone. Now it is doing a little bit of focus hunting a little bit as I pan through on the phone here. So, yeah. But anyways, real quick indoor daytime low light test with the primary camera on the Moto G Power. Again, leave your feedback as always, greatly appreciated. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna wait till a little bit later on and we're gonna redo a similar test, vlog style and traditional reviewer style with the Moto G Power's primary cameras, nighttime artificial lighting scenario. So I'll be right back with that next set of clips for y'all. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, and now we're back again, testing out the rear facing primary 16 megapixel camera on the Moto G Power. This video is being recorded in 1080p 60 FPS, okay? with no external microphone hooked up. And we're just doing a real quick vlog style stationary test here. And the only one change that I've done to this footage is I've adjusted the exposure before starting the recording. Cause I did a, a trial test and without adjusting the exposure, leaving it in auto mode, it actually comes across really, really dark. So I, I overexposed it to plus 0 0.55, all right? And hopefully this looks good. But real quick vlog style clip here. Let me know what y'all think of the overall focus, the overall stabilization, the detail retention, and the overall audio. Let me know down below. Now, real quickly what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spin the camera around and I'm gonna give y'all the traditional reviewer style test. And then we're gonna wrap up the nighttime artificial lighting test. So I'll be right back with that next test for y'all. I'll see y'all in a second. All right, everyone. So real quickly now, I've just spun the cameras around and now we're gonna get into a traditional reviewer style test. And then we're gonna wrap up the nighttime artificial lighting test. Okay, once again, this is using the primary camera, primary 16 megapixel camera on the Moto G Power. This is being recorded in 1080p at 60 FPS with no external microphone hooked up. So let me know what y'all think. Let's dive straight into the verifications and then the testing. Let's go. Now, just so y'all can see, we're gonna pan over. Y'all can see it is pitch black outside. So there is no light coming in through the window here. And the only thing we have lighting up the scene here is my overhead artificial smart light. Okay, that is the Casa light, if y'all wanted to know. And it's set to white, straight white, and 100% brightness, if you wanted to know. All right, so that's the only thing we have lighting up the scene here this evening. So let's put everything down. Let's make sure it's straight. And now let's angle everything in the traditional reviewer style approach. So let's angle it down. Boom. Back it up a little bit. Boom, there we have it. All right, there we have it. So now, real quickly here, this is just a stationary uh, clip here. This is how it would look if you record in similar lighting, 1080p, 60 FPS. Now, let me do some detail and focus testing and then we'll wrap the video up. So, check out this keyboard here. How crisp is the text? How legible is the text? All right, let me know. 
How good is the phone doing at keeping everything in focus and legible? Now it's reporting a focus lock right now. So how crispy is that text? Struggling with the focus just a little bit. But let me know. Now this looks legible, but it's not as sharp as it could be in my opinion. All right? And I'm seeing a little bit of grain on the keyboard and I wonder if that's going to be picked up after the post processing gets done. But what do y'all think? How crisp is the letters? How's it doing in this artificial low light scenario? Okay, put that down. All right, now let me get my smartphone here and let's test the focus. So we have the S7 active here and right now it's focused up on the keyboard. Let's see how quickly it takes to lock focus on the smartphone and then go back to the keyboard. Let's see how much detail it can retain as well. Let's go. We're going to do this three times. So bring in the smartphone. And it says it's locked focus. And I got to say, it's doing a pretty good job. The textures from the smartphone are getting picked up. The text on the back of the phone is looking real crisp through the viewfinder. And that is more than legible, at least to my eyes. I could read everything on there. And then the nice granular pattern on the back of the device is coming through real crispy like a little bit of a focus struggle there but it's looking pretty good pretty good indeed what do y'all think what do y'all think now i i am noticing that as it grabs focus it pushes the rest of the image um slightly darker so you may want to go ahead and overexpose it just a, just a little bit so you rein back in some of that light. But what do y'all think? Now let's take it out. See how quickly it takes to lock on the keyboard again. Pull it out. Pulse effect. And it locks back on the keyboard. So that was relatively quick. A couple fractions of a second. And let's bring back in the device. Pulse effect again. Much quicker when you bring the device back in. Again, looking really, really good. A little bit dark, but overall, really, really good. All right, take it out again. Pulse effect and lock back up on the keyboard. So it is going to struggle in this lower lighting scenario, but for the most part, it should do an okay to really good job. One more time and then we'll wrap the video up. So bringing the smart device back in. A lot quicker focus when you bring in the device in, something smaller. But what I'm noticing is when I take the device out and it has to relock, then you get that small pulsing effect before it relocks. So the focusing speeds could be a little bit faster, but it is what it is. All right. So real quick nighttime artificial lighting test with the primary cameras on the Moto G Power. All right. Now what we're going to do is sometime this week, we're going to do the final set of 4K testing, and then we're going to bring this video to a close. All right? So I'll be back with the final set of camera tests for y'all. See y'all in a little bit. All right, everyone. And now we are back in with the final set of camera tests for the Moto G power so we're getting into the 4k 30 fps testing with the moto g power so y'all can see we're out here in the big yard today and we're going to run through our usual set of tests here so starting off we're not going to waste any time let's jump straight into the pan testing so we're going to pan from here all the way through to right about there and we're going to do this two times. So that was one. Let's come on back. Okay, here we go with number two. All right, and let's come on back. All right, and let's bring it back to the center. Boom. Now we're going to do some exposure testing, so we're going to pan up and down 
from this tree y'all see and what we want to look for when we test the exposure is we want a nice smooth transition from the lighter areas of the scene to the darker areas of the scene with minimal exposure blowout so let's see what happens here now we're going to do this three times so we're focused on the plants right in front and we're going to pan down to the ground okay and pan back up to the plants how was that that was one. Number two. That was two. And last one. And that was three. Now, that didn't look too bad, but I'm noticing, and I don't know if it's going to look the same after the video processes but when I come back up to the plants it gets a little dark even though the plants are in direct sunlight so that should be a super bright image so I'm not sure what's going on here let's do it one more time down up yeah yeah all right, let's get straight into the focus testing now. We're going to test the continuous autofocus first, and then we're going to test the tap to focus. So we're going to use this tree in front as focus point number one. Okay, we're going to use that broken tree off to the right down there in the distance as focus point number two. And then we're going to use the tree over the shed as focus point number three. All right, so let's get started. So number one. That looks like it's in focus. Number two. That also looks like it's in focus. And number three. I'm going to do this one more time. That looks like it's in focus too. Okay, so coming back to number one. Yeah, that looks good. Going over to number two. That also looks good. Then coming up to number three. That looks good. All right, let me change my grips. And let's run through it again. So now we're using tap to focus. So number one, tree in front, tap. Locked up. A little bit of an exposure adjustment there, but still pretty quick. Coming over to number two, tap. Locked up. A little bit of a struggle to get that focal point in the distance, but still kind of fast. Tree over the shed, number three, tap, locked up. A little bit of a struggle to get that as well. You know, it's kind of strange considering we're out here in perfect lighting conditions. This focus should be, but it's not. It's a little hesitant, but still, it kind of gets the job done. Let's do it one more time. Tree in front, tap, locked up. A little bit of a struggle there, and you can see a big exposure adjustment. Okay, broken tree in the distance, tap, locked up, again another struggle, and then tree over the shed, tap, locked up, again, struggled a little bit, alright, now, let's round out the testing with a zoom test, hold on, I got an itch here, ah, okay, sorry y'all, not editing that out, sorry. All right, so let's round out the test with the zoom testing. So let's zoom into the tree in the distance. Let me go ahead and lock the focus. So let's tap on it. Focus is locked. Let's lock the focus. All right, and now we're going to zoom in. Now again, this is in 4K, 30 FPS. So all the stabilization is turned off, but let's see how good the stabilization is. Let's see how good the detail retention is as we move in. So zooming into 25%, 25%. That actually looks pretty good still. It is very shaky though. And I'm trying to keep super still y'all, but you can see every minute shake is getting picked up by the cameras. All right, you definitely need some type of stabilizer if you're gonna take 4K footage, maybe even a gimbal. All right, let's move up to 50%. 50%. Now, the colors look good. 
but there's a noticeable loss in detail and the image got even shakier. I don't even know if that's a word. The, Im the image got even more shaky. Okay. Let's do 100% just so y'all can see what it looks like. 100 times zoom. Ugh, that, that really doesn't look good. The colors look okay. Kind of washed out, but that doesn't look good. And it's super shaky here. All right, let's zoom out. All right, and we're back to no zoom. Okay, and last but certainly not least, let's do a real quick vlog style test and wrap up this video. We're going to do it all in one take. Okay. So let me overexpose just a little bit because I know when it sees my face, it's going to darken up. All right, so we're overexposed to plus 0 0.63. And let's see what happens here. Let me take off the focus lock too while we're in here. Don't want that focus lock going down. But I do want that exposure to stay. All right, here we go. Spin around time. All right, so closing thoughts on the cameras on the Moto G Power. How do I feel about it? Is it something that I would recommend? Is it a device that I would recommend in general? Well, if we're going straight just based off the cameras, would I recommend this one? I'm going to have to say no. You might want to pass on these. If you're trying to pick up a device, a budget device, strictly for how good the cameras are going to be, you definitely want to look elsewhere um, um, if you're looking at the Moto G Power, the 2020 model. That being said, if you're looking for a battery beast device with okay performance, then can I recommend the Moto G Power? I would have to say yes, but I can also recommend a few other options as well. And I'm going to give y'all all the recommendations in my full review for the Moto G Power. But I hope y'all enjoyed this camera video. I hope y'all found it helpful and I hope everyone is staying safe out there. I will catch you in the next one. Have a good one. We are out of here. Peace.